Well hello once again and welcome to the Waters and Stanton video channel. My name is Peter Waters and my ham radio call sign is Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor. Should you erect a horizontal or vertical HF antenna? It's a question that I get asked from time to time and it's particularly relevant I think if you're a newcomer to the hobby. Do you erect a vertical or horizontal antenna. Now the advantage of a vertical antenna of course is it doesn't take up much room, you stick it in the ground and off you go. The advantage of a horizontal wire I suppose is that uh, it very often is a cheaper way of erecting an antenna. Now I know some of you haven't got a choice, some of you have got to put a vertical antenna in the garden because that's all you can fit in. Others may have the other option where a horizontal antenna is much easier to put in than a vertical antenna. Well, let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of both types of antennas. Now, I should say from the outset that I've been licensed now for 63 years, believe it or not. And during that time, I've used verticals and horizontal antennas. And a lot of the time, it's been from fairly small gardens. So I've got a lot of experience of uh, these uh, two options and the antenna that's best also tends to be related to the frequency you operate on. So let's take the vertical first of all. A vertical antenna is very simple and most people will consider a quarter wave vertical or a multi-band vertical. You sit it, sit it on the ground and off you go. Well it's not quite that simple because you do need to look fairly closely at the ground situation because the ground is the other half of a vertical antenna. It's very important actually. In fact, uh, as regards a uh, vertical antenna, the ground is, I suppose, the thing that makes the big difference how well it works. Now, if you're a regular visitor to YouTube, you'll probably see many videos which uh, show the modeling, the computer modeling of a vertical antenna. Now the computer modelling of a vertical antenna is accurate, it's very accurate. It's just as accurate as a horizontal antenna. The problem is that the results you get from modelling in a small garden do not match what you would expect from the modelling you see on the screen. In other words, the modelling of a vertical antenna is great if it's in the middle of a field but it is not great if you are in a small garden. In fact, I would say that the modelling of a vertical antenna is one of the most misleading exercises you can embark on. It's great, it's interesting, and it tells the truth, but it only tells the truth if that vertical antenna is in the middle of a field in a wide open space. If it's in your garden, then the results will be totally, totally different. These results from uh, modelling and, and the way in which they differ in the small garden is very often not mentioned in a lot of these videos. Now, either the presenter has chosen not to mention it or perhaps he doesn't actually realise it. But the performance of a vertical antenna in a small garden changes dramatically from what you will see on your computer screen if you model it. The reason for the difference is because a vertical antenna is very dependent upon the ground around it. And it's not only the ground around it in the immediate vicinity of your garden, it's also the ground around it over a much greater distance. There's something called the Fresnel zone, which we won't go into now, but basically the ground around your vertical antenna for several wavelengths has a major effect on the performance of your antenna. So if we take a 20 meter vertical, which is five meters tall, quarter wave, the ground over several wavelengths, and a wavelength, bear in mind on 20 meters is 20 meters, several wavelengths will be three or four wavelengths. So we're getting up to around about 100 meters possibly, certainly 60 to 80 meters that makes the difference and affects the antenna. Now if you stand in your garden and you look around your garden and beyond your garden up to around about say 60 meters there'll be houses, there'll be telegraph poles, there'll be trees, there'll be shrubs, 
There'll be all sorts of objects. There'll be concrete foundations. So the ground around your antenna and in what we call the Fresnel zone is not a wide open field. It's full of concrete, it's full of metalwork, houses are full of metal or wire, electrical wiring. So it's no wonder that the vertical antenna in the small garden doesn't work as well as modelling would suggest. But it's not all bad news because verticals do work in small gardens and I'll come back to that in a bit. But let's have a look now at the horizontal antenna. The horizontal antenna works best when it's about a half wave above ground. It works even better higher. But basically, if you can get a horizontal antenna at around about a half wave high, then it will work pretty well. Now, on the 10 meter band, that's not too difficult. A 10 meter horizontal antenna needs to be only five meters above the ground. And that's certainly practical in a lot of gardens. And the same applies for the 12 and 15 meter bands. It's not too difficult to get your horizontal antenna up in the air at a reasonable height. Now, one of the features of all antennas is the angle of radiation. The angle of radiation determines how much DX you're likely to work. Let's just have a quick look. The radio signal, the energy from your antenna, leaves your antenna at a particular angle. Well, in actual fact, it's not a particular angle. It's quite a broad range of angles. But basically, you have the low angle radiation, which you show here. And if you have low angle radiation, of course, it travels further before it hits the reflective layer, comes back down at a far distance. If we have a higher angle of radiation, then of course it comes up at a more acute angle and it comes down much nearer than the other uh, option of the uh, lower angle of radiation. So you can see that the angle of radiation certainly determines how much DX you're going to work. So bear that in mind in this discussion. So let's go back to the vertical antenna. The vertical antenna sits on the ground if you're operating it on 10 or 12 or 15 meters, it works pretty well in a small garden because the Fresnel zone is not nearly as great as it would be on the lower frequencies. But it's when you come to 20 meters and lower that you start to find there are problems. The antenna doesn't work nearly as well as modeling would suggest. And this is simply because of the surrounding uh, the surrounding objects in the way of the signal. They absorb the signal, they get in the way of the signal, um, they, they provide very poor reflectivity, um, and so forth and so on. So you need to pay particular attention to radials. The more radials you put on the ground, then the better the vertical will work. But the law of diminishing returns quickly takes place. You can put four radials on the ground, and the antenna will work. You could double that to eight and the antenna will work slightly better. And when you get to around about 32 radials, you've got a reasonable antenna. It works reasonably well. How, sh how long should the radials be? Well, the length is not that important. It's the number of radials you put on the ground. There was once a thought that all radials should be a quarter wave length long. Well, a quarter wave on the ground is not a quarter wave that you understand from antennas in the air. A quarter wave on the ground is somewhat shorter. And in really and truly, a radial is not resonant anyway when it's on the ground. So the more while you get on the ground, the better it works. And I found that on 10, 15 meters or 12 meters as well, you get pretty good results from a ground mounted vertical. But there are ways of improving it. But let's go first of all on to 20 meters. On the 20 meter band, you really do start to run into difficulties because the low angle radiation is not nearly as good as modeling would suggest. What about 40 meters? Well, at 40 meters, you've got a real problem because on 40 meters, a lot of your contacts are going to be fairly short skip. That's the nature of the band, particularly during the day. And if you want to join in the fun on 40 meters and talk to stations three or four or 500 miles away, then you need reasonably high angle radiation. It's the very thing that a vertical doesn't give you. So I would suggest that on 40 meters, 
You really want to avoid a vertical if you possibly can. It will work, but it won't work nearly as well as a wire. Come back to that a bit later. So can you improve a vertical antenna? Well, yes, you can. You can raise the vertical off the ground. If you can raise that vertical off the ground, even two or three meters above the ground, and use resonant radials, then you'll get a much, much better result. Now, I know that some of you will say, well, I can't. OK, that's fair enough. But what I would say, if you're going to invest in a vertical antenna, make sure that it is the type that can be either used on the ground or on the top of a short mast. If you have that flexibility, then it means to say that if and when you can raise the vertical off the ground, you're going to get much improved performance. So when you're going to buy a vertical, just bear in mind that my recommendation would be to get a vertical that is rigid so that it could be mounted either on the ground or mounted on the top of a short stub mast. The improvement you get is quite dramatic. And I've covered that in a previous video. And in fact, there's an interesting article in the latest Radcom about ground planes. Ground planes basically is an antenna in amateur radio terms, <coughs> excuse me, um, which is raised off the ground by two or three meters. The higher the better, but two or three meters is more than adequate to give you good performance. So if you get a chance to read that, uh, that um, article in Radcom, it underlines the fact that the best place for vertical is not on the ground, but several meters above the ground. So let's now turn our attention to horizontal antennas. The simplest horizontal antenna is a dipole. It's very cheap to make. You just need a length of coax cable and a bit of flex. Uh, you could put a 20 meter uh, dipole in your garden. And even if you've got a small garden, you'll probably get it up to around about uh, six or seven metres, and it will work quite well, six or seven metres. You've got plenty of contacts on 20 metres. If you can squeeze in a horizontal antenna that covers a 40 metre band, then you'll have great fun on the, that band as well. And even if it's only 20 uh, feet or whatever is it, about seven or eight metres above the ground, it will work pretty well. So a horizontal antenna is not a bad option. And I would say that a horizontal antenna is much, much better on 40 meters than a vertical antenna. And you'll probably find that in many cases, and I've found a lot of the time, that a low horizontal antenna on 20 meters works well. And it works sometimes better than a vertical. And I say sometimes, in fact, quite often it works better than the vertical on 20 meters. You can have an in-fed half-wave. An in-fed half-wave will work on its harmonics. So if, for example, you were able to squeeze in um, a 20-meter uh, length of wire, which would give you a resonant length on 40 meters, that will also work on 20, 15, and 10 if you use a 49 to 1 matching transformer at the end. And I've done several videos on in-fed half-waves. An in-fed half-wave is probably the most, um, I say, it's the most effective simple antenna to get going on the HF bands you don't need an antenna tuner but you do need the 49 to 1 matching transformer you can make your own I've done a video on making your own transformer or you can buy a ready-made antenna but all it is is a length of wire and I found you can bend it quite uh, radically around the garden to fit it in. So if you can't get 66 foot or uh, 20 meters of wire down the garden, you can bend it once or bend it twice um, to fit it into the garden. And it still works pretty well. That will give you very good results on 40 meters, far better than you will get with a vertical in your back garden. What about even lower, 80 meters? Well, I would say, as regards 80 meters, forget a vertical because it will not work very well at all. 80 meters is very much a short skip band for most of us, and particularly during the day and the uh, early evenings. Um, it's a natter band for a lot of people. It's great fun to have a chat on 80 meters with local club members and uh, those further afield, say two or 300 miles, and you'll get that on a horizontal antenna. You won't get that on a vertical antenna. A vertical antenna on 80 metres, unless you're a serious dick, so you've got a lot of open space, you can put down a lot of radials, and you've got not too many objects <laughs> within about a quarter of a mile of you, then it will work pretty well. But that is in a different 
area completely. Um, if you're uh, operating from a small garden, then really and truly I wouldn't uh, recommend uh, an 80 metre vertical, unless that's all you can fit in. And it's worth mentioning, we're talking about amateur radio. We're not talking about professional stations. The thing with amateur radio is to make, to make, you make the best of what you've got. That's really the guideline. Make the best of what you've got. If you can only fit a vertical antenna into your garden, so well and good you'll get contacts. If you can fit a wire into your garden, horizontal wire, certainly it'll work much, much better on 40 metres and 80 metres, and probably most of the time on 20 metres, unless you can get that vertical off the ground. So let's summarise. A vertical antenna on 10, 15 or 10, 12 and 15 metres works pretty well from a small garden. It works reasonably well on 20 metres, but if you want better performance, get that vertical off the ground. So if you're thinking about buying a vertical, make sure you buy a rigid vertical that you can lift off the ground because you'll get a uh, great uh, improvement. If, on the other hand, uh, you are going to look at a wire antenna, it will work quite well on 10, 12 and 15 metres. In fact, it worked very well on, on those bands. Uh, it'll work uh, well on 20 metres, probably work better than a ground mounted vertical. It will certainly beat the pants off a vertical on 40 metres and likewise on 80 metres. So in summary, a vertical or horizontal antenna works okay on the, uh, the higher bands on 10, 12, 15 metres. I would tend to favour a horizontal antenna on the lower bands and that includes uh, the 18 um, or 17 metre, the 20 metre, 40 metre and 80 metre bands. That's my take on whether you should install a horizontal or vertical antenna. It's based on my experience over the last 63 years. Yes, modelling does give you a great education on the way antennas work, but it doesn't live in the real world, particularly for vertical antennas. There we are. So, enjoy your home radio. Don't forget, make the best of what you've got. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.